Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to Maxon for having me. My name is Thomas Brown. I'm a medical artist and creative director at Vessel Studios. We're a medical art company servicing pharmaceutical, biotech, and medical education. Uh, I'm going to start off just showing you all our, our, um, our demo reel, and then we're going to get in and do some fun stuff with the new simulation system in Cinema 4D. Awesome, thank you. And a huge shout out to the whole Vessel team for creating that beautiful uh, reel that we just launched a year ago. Um, but it's our, our 10 year anniversary. We're really excited to be here presenting with Max on. Um, so I've been using Cinema 4D for 20 years now. I started using it at the beginning of grad school in 03. And I still wake up every morning and I open this software and I'm excited to use it uh, for a number of reasons. Really. The way Maxon Cinema 4D has embraced the scientific art community, uh, they really care about their artists, they care about the scientific and medical artists, um, and we really feel a part of their family. And they're always creating features that really help feed our creativity. So years ago I was there when MoGraph was first launched, and that changed medical artists' lives forever. It gave us the cloner and the random effector, things we use every day in all of our files. Mo Dynamics, volumes, and now we have the new simulation system, which gives us the ability to give gooiness and softness, things that medical artists are always dreaming of, to their objects. So we're gonna go through this amazing simulation system. I'm gonna show you the different types of simulation, cloth, rope, and soft bodies. And we're gonna build some quick, simple setups. I'm really emphasizing these are quick, these are simple, and you know, there's really no entry point for an artist with this. You can be a beginner, or you can use this if you're, you're very proficient and you're just looking for new techniques. And I also always like to say this isn't just for medical artists. These techniques certainly apply to all facets of 3D. So I'm always looking for new ways, thinking of new ways to build a cell. Of course, we love cells in medical art. And um, so I wanted to try to build something using cloth, sort of like this dendritic cell. This is an artist representation but they're kind of known for having these petal-like structures on them. And I wanted to just use cloth so it had sort of a, a thin membrane feel to it. Um, you know, that was almost like a, a balloon or a, a, a empty floating bag. So we're gonna build this object very quickly. I'm gonna delete it, we'll delete all this and start from scratch and just try to build kind of a simple dendritic cell like that example I just showed you. Um, and really my modeling has evolved a lot over time with using Cinema 4D. And there's a way that I'm modeling a lot now uh, that I want to show you all with this particular build. It's really fast and fun and intuitive and very different from the traditional sub-D modeling that we're used to. So I'm just going to create a sphere and a cylinder and a cloner. And I'm going to drop the cylinder in the cloner. And then I want to use this cloner in object mode. 
And I'm going to clone the cylinders to the surface of this sphere. So I'll drag the sphere in. Oh. I will get that sphere in the cloner here. We'll just uh, grab this dropper. And so now we have the cloner in object mode, and it's looking at this sphere and cloning all these cylinders to the sphere. Uh, let's adjust the cylinder properties a little bit. We'll make the radius about what it is, maybe a little bit bigger, 60. And we'll make them a lot shorter. So I'll set their height down to 16. And we'll clone a few more of them. I'll get up closer to 60 here. And then give these some random rotation on the surface of this sphere. So I'll go to my effectors, grab a random effector. And if I look at the parameters here, I don't want position. I just want some rotation. And so I'll rotate this a bit to get a shape that looks like this. Now, very quickly, I already have something that's kind of like a blocked-in shape of that dendritic cell. Obviously, we can't simulate with this, and it's just kind of a, a mess of it, you know, uh, clipping primitive objects. But it's a good start for us. So if we can get this to a nice mesh quickly, you know, that would be wonderful. So what we're going to actually use is volumes here. I'll grab a volume builder and a volume mesher. I'll put the builder in the mesher. And then I'm going to put all my objects under that volume builder. And it's going to use volumes to create this nice uh, wrapped mesh based on all of my objects. I'm going to decrease the voxel size a bit down to four, let's say, so we get a bit more detail. And then we've got kind of uh, rigidness between our, uh, where our objects are clipping into each other. So I can go into my volume builder and add a uh, SDF smooth. I'll just click on that. It'll smooth out my volume mesh a bit. And then I'll just reduce the strength. And this is getting to that original model you saw on the screen when I started this. But this will not simulate well. I need a, a nice quad mesh, low poly mesh, if I'm going to put cloth on this. So we have the amazing remesher now that's basically using ZBrush algorithms to give us uh, a retopologized surface. And I'll drop my volume mesher underneath the remesh. And we'll just decrease the remesh uh, mesh density down to something closer to 40. And it'll calculate. It's a bit of a complicated uh, object with a lot of polygons, so it takes a moment for it to calculate. But what's amazing is if, if you're used to doing basic sub-D modeling, uh, where you're using the knife and you're extruding and all those things, if you build this setup, this hierarchy, and just start placing primitive objects in this, in real time, you get this uh, remesh feedback, and it allows you to model things so, so quickly. So here, this looks great. This is what we need for our simulation. So I'm going to current state to object this and just delete this whole setup. We don't need it anymore. I don't need the random effector. But that quickly, we have this really complicated mesh that we created. So now let's, ha let's have some fun and let's add simulation to this. I'm going to go to my simulation tag menu and grab cloth. And we'll hit play and see what happens. Nothing happens. I do want to show you all, just in our project settings under simulation, I have in the scene gravity set to 0 here. By default, it would probably be set, I forget, one negative 981, something like that. We'll click play, and it'll just fall. But we want that gravity set to 0. And then to give it that nice kind of undulating motion, we'll add a force to it. And all of the forces work beautifully with the new simulation system. So I'll grab a turbulence. And I like to stay pretty organized with these forces. Um, so in my cloth forces tag, I'll set this to include, and I'll drag the turbulence in here. Let's put this material on this dendritic cell so we can see it a little bit better. And the turbulence, I'll set the strength up a little bit higher, something like 40. Same with the scale. And we'll hit play now. And we've got this beautiful, gooey, looks like it's floating through liquid kind of cell. And just to really drive that this is 
simulation. You know, we, we can grab a, a sphere now. I'll make it a hexahedron and reduce the size of this quite a bit. Let's add another color. Maybe this is like a virus or some kind of pathogen that this dendritic cell is going to kind of envelop. Um, in our simulation tag menu, we have a collider tag. And then we can just click play and move this sphere into this object and it will interact with it, kind of like it's swallowing it up. And it's kind of just a simple, lovely setup. If you just needed some kind of close-up shot where this pathogen is getting wrapped up or absorbed by this cell, um, maybe we can even go into our surface tag of our cloth tag and crank up the stretchiness of this a lot. We'll go to uh, about 100. Click play again and just kind of smash this thing in here. And you get this really beautiful effect. No clipping, it looks great, it works great. So that's cloth, cloth on a cell. Typically we think of cloth doing it more on sheets and two dimensional shapes, but it's kind of neat to put it on you know, a, a closed object like this and see how it works. All right, so now we're gonna look at rope. I love, love, love the new rope tag. We've kind of had a lot of problem solving ways we've come up with making things like ropes in the past, but I really wanted to test the limits of rope because I love making dense, interesting, simulated scenes. The first thing I did when Mo Dynamics was released years ago, which gave us dynamics with MoGraph, was I cloned hundreds of cubes, made an attractor, hit play, and watched them all clump around that attractor. And to this day, it's one of my favorite files to show people and play with. So I kind of did the same thing with the rope. I cloned a bunch of splines, put a rope tag on them, made an attractor, and hit play. And I really just wanted to see how robust this was, how well it would still act. And I started getting some really fun interaction. Let me up the strength of this actually a little bit. Started getting this really like gooey, globby, organy. Kinetic sculpture -y thing. You know, and this is something I love to show to people who don't really know what I do, just to kind of be like, this is the world I get to work in. And things like this, I always get a really big reaction from. But when I saw this, I was like, this is great. This is robust. This means there's a lot we can do with this. And you can see in my object manager, I have barely anything here that's making all of this happen. But really beautiful, a lot of fun. So I started making tons of these rope files. Um, I wanted to see if I could weave things together. So I made this simple little braiding machine where these ropes are just fixed to these hidden objects that are moving around this figure eight. And again, I was really excited just to see how well it worked. So if you wanted to make, you know, the Nike-esque textile-ish animations, um, you can actually weave splines together now and they act appropriately and they look beautiful and there's not a lot of bugginess or clipping or anything like that. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys just a, a practical application for uh, using the rope tag to make some cilia. Cilia are kind of the projections that come off of some of the cells in our body. Uh, they look something like this. This is a scanning electron micrograph image of some cilia on some cells in your airways. And these kind of sweep back and forth and keep your airways clean. So again, this is something we've built many times in many ways in Cinema 4D, but this is just such an, a beautiful, simple way to do it. So I've got this plane here, and I'm gonna use this plane to kind of generate my motion. And it's just moving back and forth via this formula effector. Formula effector is a great effector for looping motions. It's based on a formula, and here we're just using position, and we have position active and the z-axis, so this is just moving back and forth. And what we wanna do is create a bunch of splines and attach them to the surface of this so it swings 
back and forth and makes that cilia motion that we're going for. So I'm gonna hide the cube and make a spline. And I just need a, a two-point spline because the rope simulation sees the intermediate points as kind of the, the joints or the floppy parts on the spline. And I'm, I'm making this, clicking the first point at zero, 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 world space, because I want my axis to be at the bottom of this spline for this particular setup. I can probably make this a little bit taller. And then again, we're gonna grab a cloner. I'll put the spline in the cloner. And let's say uh, we'll do eight by eight. We don't need any splines along the Y axis. And then we'll kind of squeeze these in on each other. So I'll reduce the size here. And that looks pretty good. Let me turn my cube back on so I can see sort of how they're situated. And I'll move this up just so it's kind of right above this cube here. Cool, that looks pretty good. Maybe make these a little bit taller. So I'll just select one spline and crank that up a little bit. And then I want these splines to all be slightly different heights. So again, that's why I kept that axis at the bottom of the spline. And I'm gonna grab another random effector. And under parameters, I don't need position, but I'll turn scale on. I don't need uniform scale. I just want to adjust the y-axis scale. And when I do that, you see I get nice variation in the height of these. So that looks great. Um, now, I'm going to make this whole thing editable. So I'm going to go uh, to my cloner, right click, and go to current state to object. And it's going to give me a, a null with tons of splines in it. Again, I'm going to select that and go down to connect objects and delete, and it will connect all of my splines into one single spline that's made up of all these segments. Now I don't need the random or my cloner anymore. I just have my, my nice spline object now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some intermediate points to this. So I'll crank this up. Just looks good, a bit over 100. Um, maybe some more. And then I'm gonna select the base points of this so I'm ready to attach these to this little plane down here. So I'm gonna go to point mode and visible only is off and we'll just select all these points here. And now we're gonna grab some cloth tags. Sorry, some, uh, some rope tags. So we're gonna go to the simulation tag menu again. I'm gonna grab the rope tag and I'm also going to grab the rope belt tag. And that rope belt tag is how I'm gonna belt the ropes to this cube. So now, I can click on my rope belt tag, drag my cube object into the Dropbox here, and then I'll kind of zoom in so you can all see this. When I click set, because I've selected these base points, it's going to connect those base points to my cube. Now let's give this rope some geometry since we just have splines so we can see this a little better. And I'll make a color here. Green, green cilia. All right, so to make, the, uh, to make the geometry, we'll use a sweep, which is right here. And we'll grab a circle spline. I'll put the circle in the sweep, and I'll put my giant bunch of cilia splines under the sweep. And then it's decrease the radius of this to something like four. And we can zoom in and look at our subdivisions here. On the circle, we don't need all of the intermediate point subdivisions. We don't need that much geometry. So I'll bring this down to say two. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's change the view so you can see this a little bit better. And the other thing we wanna do, since this has a radius of four, we wanna make sure that the rope boundary where the, uh, the actual collision will occur, the simulation occurs, will also match that radius of four. So under the rope tag, uh, under the tag um, menu, we can go to radius here, it's set to 0.5, and I'll set that to four. All right, <clears throat> so this is all set up. Let's see what happens when we click play.
So it's all hooked up appropriately. Again, looking at our object managers is all we have to create this simulation. So let's adjust a few settings here and see if we can make this look a little bit better. First, I'm going to go to the formula effector. <clears throat> and let's make our little rectangle slide back and forth a little bit more. So I'll increase this to, say, 33. And let's also adjust the speed of it a little bit. So we'll go to our variables in the formula effector, and I'll increase this a bit. Start it over. So again, you can see quickly we start getting some really interesting, fun stuff here. <clears throat> So I think what this needs, I'm not sure where our gravity is right now. It looks like maybe we have zero gravity going. So let me pause this, and let's just take a look at the gravity setting. There's a little bit of positive gra gravity. Let's crank this up high so it really stretches these tendrils up. And I think that'll give us a better motion here. So pretty cool, fun, silly emotion. Um, again, we haven't really even touched these settings, but we could go in and adjust the bendiness of this, the stretchiness. We'll just up the bendiness to 44 just to see kind of what we get. And I'm going to go back to my gravity and just decrease it slightly. And let's make our formula effector motion a little bit slower and a little bit more distance that it's traveling. And again, if I created a sphere here, and added a collider tag to this. We're going to get that same interaction that you saw with the dendritic cell as I move this in. It's going to see it. It's not going to clip with it. Pretty amazing real-time interaction. All right, so that is the rope tag. We're going to move on and talk about soft bodies. Um, so there's this one idea that medical artists are always working on is how to pack cells together nicely. Uh, let me just kind of show you an image of what cells kind of look like all squished together. And we've come up with a lot of ways in C4D to take a bunch of spheres and kind of mush them together. But I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we could use soft bodies to do this? So. I often like to use geometry kind of as a force to, to contain objects or to bump into objects. So here I just have a cube, and I have a collider tag on it set to back. And we're going to fill this with some soft body objects and see if we can make them kind of squish together. So I'm going to grab a cloner, a sphere. We'll set the sphere to hexahedron, drop it in the cloner. And then let's clone, say, uh, five along the x-axis and four along the y-axis. And we don't need any on the z. And then I'm going to scale this whole thing down so it's inside of this box. Reduce the size of the sphere. Great. All right, that looks good. Now we're going to add a soft body tag to the cloner. Soft bodies and simulation work with the cloner itself, being on top of the cloner, and with these primitive objects. So that's pretty cool. Click play and see what happens. Nothing. So let's go adjust some settings. Let's look at the soft body. Uh, the surface here, the stretchiness, we'll up that a bit, 222. Balloon, this inflates these objects. So we'll add some overpressure to this. 
something like 3.5. And then under the soft body itself, we'll crank that softness up to 222. And make the stretchiness maybe a bit lower here. All right, let's see what happens now when we hit play. So they inflate, they interact with each other. And you, actually, even though we don't have any forces here, they start pushing each other around. And it's a really beautiful, interesting setup. Again, nothing to it, you know, 30 seconds of setup, but I think it gives you this idea of where you can start pushing soft bodies to, to get some interesting results. So just to show you one final setup, taking something like this and adding more interesting shapes to it. Here, you know, I took a second to make this worm and copy it and paste it a few times. And so these all have soft body tags on them now. And again, they're contained within this cube. And when I click play, I get some really fun, playful interaction between all these. And definitely before the simulation system, we didn't, weren't thinking about putting soft body tags on everything and them interacting and working so well. But to me, this is a really beautiful setup that I think can be pushed really far. You know, it looks great just if you're into motion graphics, visual effects, making beautiful, interesting, kind of abstract kinetic art. Um, but for the medical artist, you know, certainly there's a long way you can go with something like this. Uh, so with all the soft body stuff we've been working on, we made a little reel for NAB. I'm gonna show that to you now. Then the amazing Amanda Slade's gonna come on and show you some more complex practical applications for using the simulation system. Let me show you guys that little reel. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Maxon. Amanda, take it away. OK. Hi, everybody. My name is Amanda Slade, and I'm a medical animator and creative lead at Vessel Studios. Um, and as Thomas has been talking about, we've been really fired up about the new dynamic system in cinema. And uh, a big reason why this particular update has been super interesting to us as scientific illustrators is because almost everything in the natural world, which is what we normally animate, has this like soft, squishy or fluid like motion to it. Um, and it's like this type of beautiful organic motion that we want to animate most in our, in our animation. Um, but at times technology has limited to us because making something look really soft or organic um, can take a lot of processing power or just be really difficult to control. But with Maxon's new soft body dynamic system, it's made it really easy to work with soft body dynamics. And once I saw how robust it was, I wanted to just reanimate every organic subject I have in the past. So uh, for example, this piece, is a, this piece of anatomy are called the alveoli. They're these tiny little air sacs at the end of your uh, bronchial tree in your lungs. And they're responsible for exchanging carbon dioxide with oxygen as you breathe. And I always thought they were super interesting. They sort of, um, I just imagine this scene where there are these tiny little balloons just inflating with air as this like intricate network of capillaries is pumping blood all around them. A very like organic, soft scene and uh, with a lot of great tissue reaction to it. Um, so this is how we animated this in the past. And while this is still a, a beautiful animation, and I think it really captures that kind of almost eerie sci-fi quality this piece of anatomy has, 
I don't know if I'm totally convinced that these are like papery thin tissue. And I don't know if like it really looks like they're inflating with air. And I there's not really a ton of organic interaction between the vasculature and the uh, the alveoli itself, which is really the point of this anatomy is the interaction of blood and air. So I'm going to kind of take you through reimagining this piece of anatomy with the new soft body dynamics system in mind and all the control it provides. I'm also going to kind of go into ZBrush and model some of this to kind of show how even some of the more intricate models can be used with the soft body dynamics system pretty easily. Okay, so I'm going to start in cinema and start creating that little cluster of uh, alveoli. And so I'm going to start with a cloner and a, and a sphere. Get rid of the cube here. And I'm just going to make a small little cluster. And so I want to give this a little bit of an organic shape. So I'm going to go into the effectors and get a random effector. I'm also going to get a push apart. And under cloner in the effectors, if you drag the push apart under the random, it will keep these guys from clipping into each other even as we adjust our, our randomness, which is great because it's kind of best practices to not have anything clip into each other when you're working with dynamics. And we can kind of smoosh these together. And I think that's looking like a wonderful little cluster of spheres. Looks exactly like inside your lungs. OK, so now I'm going to export this out as an OBJ and then bring it into ZBrush. And here they are. OK, so we have our little cluster of spheres here. And now I'm going to continue modeling. I'm just going to take you through some of the common tools in ZBrush that I like to use for, for modeling. And one of them is the Z-spheres. So you can find them in the append. There's a little Z-sphere here. Bring that into the scene. And it is gigantic. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Just to the diameter of we want our little uh, branch of our bronchial tree to be. So then I can move this over to our cluster of spheres. And if you haven't used these spheres before, they're just a great way to kind of sketch out a model. So wherever there's a Z sphere, you can draw another Z sphere. And you kind of get that little armature there, which you can then drag out. Oh, you've got to decrease your draw size extend it out and it sort of accordions out. And then you click draw again, you can kind of add more Z spheres anywhere along that arm. And then you can continue to sort of pose them as this little like action figure version of your model. Um, I typically like to use this for modeling uh, branching geometry because wherever there's a Z sphere, you can just add another branch. And Continue to just sort of move it around. And I like to use this to make, you know, bronchial trees and nerves and stuff, but this is also very commonly used for character creation or creature creation. You can probably already see a kind of creature forming here with weird little arms. Um, but, you know, bronchial trees can be characters too. You know, they got a lot of personality. So what do we do from here? Um, we got a lovely little action figure, but we want it to be birthed into geometry. We want it to be editable and manipulated in geometry as well. To do that, we go scroll down to adaptive skin and you can push preview and that will just give you a look at what it's gonna look like when it's geometry. Um, and you can continue to adjust and look at it. But when you're ready, you can just click make adaptive skin. And it doesn't really do anything, but it, is stored as appendable. So if you go back to append, there it is. Um, and so we can keep our 
our Z sphere structure. We'll just turn it off for now. And so we now have like a manipulatable mesh. Okay, so from here, I want to start modeling vasculature. So I want to have a network of um, capillaries wrap around these alveoli, these little air sacs. So um, what I'm going to do to do that is merge this down and kind of create a shell around this entire geometry where I can draw a mask on and then extrude geometry from that mask. So I'm going to duplicate this cluster, bring it down. I'll duplicate the bronchial branch as well. And then I'm just going to merge these together, go down to merge, merge down. OK, so now this is one structure, but I kind of wanted a nicer surface to draw on. So I'm going to dynamesh it. And you can kind of see if we put on transparent our cluster below and it's kind of clipping into it. And I just want it to be like just a surface shell. So I can adjust that going to our deformation and just inflate it out a little bit. And you can see it within there. Um, and then we can polish. Always love to polish things. <laughs> and then um, under geometry, I'm just going to subdivide a little bit to make it nice and smooth. And so from here, I'm going to paint in a lovely network of vessels. Um, so we're on just the regular uh, sculpting brush here. But if we hit Control, we'll go to our masking pen. And now I can paint on the model, make it a little bit bigger. And so I'm just going to draw some vessels wrapping all around our, our little spheres here. Um, and this is one thing I really like about working with ZBrush as, and C4D together is that you can get really specific and kind of have your artist touch with ZBrush and then have all that like really powerful animating in C4D. Um, so I have a pre-made mask here just to not belabor drawing out all these vessels. Turn that off. Okay, so here I took a little more time and just painted out all this vasculature. It's lovely. It's beautiful. And so what do we do with it now? Um, I want to isolate this geometry and then extract geometry from it. So to do that, I'm going to make it into a poly group. So if we turn on our uh, grid lines here, we can see our poly groups. Now, if we go down to poly group, there's a section here that says group mask. I can also increase this polish. So if I click this, you can see everything that we masked out is now its own poly group. And why that's great is if we do control shift click, we can isolate just the poly group. So there's our little vasculature network. It looks lovely, but I don't think very many red blood cells could be traveling through this. It's a little flat. So how do we puff this up? How do we make it nice and an easy highway for the red blood cells? We can do that with um, edge loop here. And under panel loops, you can increase the thickness a little bit here. Get some of that polish. Never turn down an opportunity to polish things. And this is your bevel, so how much curvature it's going to extrude from. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. So now if I click panel loops, oh, it doesn't like subdivisions, so we're going to delete lower. Don't need them anyway. All right. And one thing you do notice, the underlying geometry popped back up. We don't want that, so it's just hidden right now. I want it gone. So I'm going to go to modify typology, delete hidden. Now, when we go to edge loop, panel loops, we get a lovely extrusion of our very nice network of capillaries. And from here, we can go back down to our deformation and polish it up. No, I love to polish things. All right. And then we can also inflate it out a little bit. So nice and puffy little blood vessels there. All right, so those look great. And then, of course, from here, we can Z-remesh it. Um, but if we turn back on the underlying geometry here, 
turn off transparency. You can see this is why it's super great technique is like you can get um, you can get this detailing on top of the whatever geometry you have. So like whether you have a character and you want to add armor to them or jewelry or any kind of detail, it can just like hug that underlying anatomy really well. Um, OK, so I'm going to let's take this back into C4D and bring it to life, literally make it breathe. Okay, so here we are with all our objects loaded up back into C4D. I have my vessels and my bronchial and my alveoli here. So I'm going to make these, uh, I want this to inflate with air and, and breathe. So we're going to start with just the alveoli here. I'm going to turn off the vessels and the, the bronchial. We'll get back to them. And then so here we have our little cluster. To make it dynamic, I'm going to right click and go to simulation tags and go to soft body. Right away, you see all these little poles pop up. This is how it's, the soft body is going to tell it to how, how bendy it's going to be. It's like the structure within the geometry. So under soft body, I want these to inflate. So I want it pretty soft. So under this tab, I'm going to increase that quite a bit. I'm also going to increase the target length do a lot and a target length is essentially telling all those little poles like how far they can expand past their their 100%. Um, I also just like to increase the poles and increase the spread of it so they're nice and even and then turn it off because they're kind of annoying to look at. <laughs> so now if we push play you know they're sort of drifting off they're not really expanding too excitingly so I'm going to go over that was our soft body. Now let's look at the surface, which is how bendy the surface of these are going to get. So we have a nice section for bendiness. I definitely want that and some stretchiness. And then there's also a target length here, which whereas the poles are describing how far that those inside will expand, the target length for the surface is kind of describing how two points on your surface of your geometry can expand. So I definitely want that to expand a bit as well. All right, so if I push play, boing, they're definitely moving now. But I feel like if this happened in your lungs, this would probably be your very last breath of air because they're it's exploding. So how do we get these alveoli under control? We want them to breathe properly. And so to do that, we're going to use a vertex map. So you can find that in the other tags, vertex map. And a vertex map turns everything red here. It's essentially this map telling it can be piped into your dynamics or other systems. Um, everything that's red, you can kind of think of as, as being off or in this case, not dynamic. And anything that's yellow will be turn on or be dynamic or be soft. So to make something yellow, we can use our fall off fields here. And I'm going to drop in a spherical field. So now you can see wherever this sphere is, it is yellow, which in soft bodies, that will mean wherever the sphere is, that will be soft and squishy. And so I want to use this map to make these breathe. So I'm going to turn off the soft bodies for now so I can concentrate on the vertex map animation. Um, OK, so going back over to fields, I'm going to keyframe this here to start at 0, go to 45, increase this where it's entirely yellow, keyframe that, and then decrease it back to zero. And if we pull up the dope sheet here, increase the timeline. Go into our track settings here, we can set it to repeat. So now it will just Breathe in and out over and over again forever, which is what we want. Um, so that looks like a very nice little breathing animation for the vertex map. But what do we do with it? I'm going to re-enable the soft bodies here. Go to mix animation, turn on with force. And you see here it says map. And that is where we can put in the vertex map. So mix animation is essentially telling like it was what strength is it going to adhere to that vertex map and uh, the default setting of one seems to work all right here. You can also put it into any of your 
soft settings here. So I want my vertex map to drive the softness, the target length. I want it to drive the bendiness and the stretchiness. Put it to each of these settings and this target length as well. All right, so now let's push play. And look at that, they are breathing in and out. And this is just so cool. Like you really weren't able to get this detailed with controlling your soft bodies before. So that's awesome. But we also want to have some interaction with this vasculature. I want it to have its own soft body dynamic system as well. And so I'm gonna do same thing, simulation tag, soft bodies. And I'm going to increase its softness, stretchiness, and under surface. Oh, that's bendiness. I don't want too much of that. All right, 20. Soft bodies, 300, 400. And I'm going to turn off these spheres for now just so we can concentrate on our vasculature. Okay, so I push play, and it's definitely blowing up. Um, but we really don't want our vessels just like inflating and drifting off in our body. So let's get them under control as well. We're going to do that same way with the vertex map, other tags, vertex map. And we're going to do the same thing using the fields. In this case, I'm going to pull up a linear field instead. Rotate that 90 degrees. All right, so anywhere this linear field is creating that distinction between red and yellow. I don't really want it just to flood with blood like that. I want it to be a nice like pump. So I'm gonna call this linear field A and duplicate it. This one B. And then I'm gonna drag in B and subtract it from A. All right, so now we have a nice little band of vertex map here. I'm gonna put that in a null so it's easier to control. Okay, so now wherever we move this, there'll be a nice little band of uh, yellow there. And so now we're gonna pipe that into our soft bodies. So we're gonna put that under mix animation into the map. And then the same thing, I'll, anywhere that it is soft, I want it to be controlled by the soft bodies or the uh, vertex map. All right, so now that works really well. And it creates this nice little pump of blood wherever vertex map is. Um, and so what's great is that now when we enable the other geometry, it all works together. Oh, whoops, right in the one. And so they are kind of escaping the spheres a little bit. So um, the other great thing that can work is the connector, which Thomas kind of talked about as well, I believe. So if we click connector, go to update live, and this will detect anything else that's dynamic around it. And you can see it creates all these little connections. And so now when it inflates, they are all contained within the capillary net. And so this is just a lot of really great control to it. Um, so in the end, we'll just show how this can look in the end. You can have a lot of different soft bodies working together with each other. You can also use that vertex map to control different um, textures. And uh, so you have a lot of control with that. But I think that's it for me. Um, I hope this inspires you to kind of uh, reimagine some of your other uh, projects and add a lot of soft body dynamics to them as well. All right. Amazing stuff, Amanda.